You got a New Year's resolution? Start waking up earlier. Really? No. <laughs> uh, nope. Not that I've thought of yet. I did. I felt like I had one, didn't I? Yeah, you want to start waking up earlier? Oh, start waking up earlier. Nah. Yeah. 6 a.m. 5 a.m. starts. Oof. See the sunrise. That's like my. That's why my father-in-law doesn't work here with us. He's like a 4:30 every morning. Wake up, have my breakfast shake. That's too early. There's nothing going on at 4:30. No, 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 that's absurd. Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're having a good day out there. Uh, welcome to our show. We're financial advisors here, a little off beat. Sometimes we say things that uh, you probably wouldn't hear financial advisors say. And by that, I mean the data that we share with you, not the funny comments that somehow we can't bleep out. We should have a bleep button. I think we had that at one point. What does this do? Nothing. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> I got to watch the words. Oh, uh, Hey, we're going to talk about the stock market today. I got some cool things to share with you. Welcome, welcome, John, Missy, Craig, Kirk, Shadow Dragon, Dr. Horton, of course, I don't know what that means. Uh, Ad der Gaia shoot a deer, no? You get that? You get it? Yeah, you know? Ad der Gaia shoot a deer, no? Yeah? It's the Wisconsin accent. Oh, uh, okay. Hey there, going. All right. I got well. Hey. Welcome. Welcome. Um, so we're going to dive into it. And uh, oh, fun thing, actually, Cody, real quick. Uh, on Friday is the. The CPI numbers, that's inflation, the inflation up or down. You want to place a wager? I don't know. There's no way to know, right? So we don't know the answer. Do you think inflation goes higher, lower, or stays the same for the month? So I'll give you some time to research that. You, you can think about what you want to do there. And then if you happen to, I, I kind of feel like I know what I want to say. So if you happen to be anything different, maybe we place a wager. You want an answer now? No, no, you, you take your time. We got till Friday. Well, we have till tomorrow. But just thought it'd be a little fun office bet there. See what happens. Double or nothing. Um, all right, let's start with the markets here and dive in. So if you were looking around today, slight positive day today, nothing really exciting, which is fine. We've done a lot of work over the last couple of days for the stock market to have gotten back to where it is. If you look at the Russell, that's going to be your leader today. It was the biggest gainer again, uh, even though it wasn't you know a whole lot compared to yesterday. It's still in fourth place year to date, and uh, it was a broad rally. Uh, your small cap growth, your small cap index as a whole, uh, and the value stocks all did well in the in the small caps anyways. If you look at the S&P, uh, Russell's in last place still year to date. I think I said that. Uh, the S&P almost back to record highs, but what's the reason for it to move to record highs? We just did all this work to get there. Now you're asking investors, traders, speculators to pay the highest price they've ever paid. Don't you feel like there needs to be a reason? There needs to be excitement, maybe earnings or some positive, hey, we're not going to tax the devil out of you by Congress or something like that, right, to get the ball moving. Eh, there's still a little concern in the air with the new virus and everything. So no real reason to make new highs even tomorrow or the next day, right? We need something. What's the catalyst, as they would say there? Anyways, the S&P is barely in second place year to date, but still has a 25% year to date uh, gain. So that's a good thing there. It was led by communication services stocks today. A little bit of a recovery there. It was one of your better performing areas of the market. Oh, and healthcare. No, nope, I'm going to do it right. XLV is the uh, ETF I like to use for that. So healthcare was a leading sector today, up 0.8%. Uh, if you look across the board there. Oh, and I'll, I want to point out, uh, I'll go over here. Materials came in. Uh, well, actually, it faded away. Okay, so uh, materials faded away just a little bit. Uh, but that one was another one close to highs. Your most overbought sectors at the moment, utilities and real estate, if you're looking through those. Um COVID be gone stocks, I'll say. Those were your best performers in the S&P today. And by that, I mean stocks that would do well uh, if COVID was not a thing, right? So your cruise lines, Norwegian cruise, a uh, little bit higher. Well, it was the best performing cruise line um, on the day there. Uh, Carnival Cruise uh, was the second best performing stock in the S&P here today. And Royal Caribbean was the third. So this would be the COVID be gone type thing, right? There's no, no COVID, whatever. Now you got Las Vegas Sands, one of the leaders here. Uh, and just over the last couple of days, but otherwise a very weak stock for the year. And then the airlines, United Airlines, nice recovery on the day uh, and a couple others as well. Uh, PayPal gave you a little bit of a bounce finally. That's a good sign there as well. So I'm not complaining about that one. But on the downside, semiconductors largely took a break on the day. So if you're looking through, you're going to find NXPI semiconductors down 4% on the day. Um, 
I'll try to give you a few others. NVIDIA was the bigger one that took a bit of a break. Microchip, M MCHP is another one. Otherwise, very strong stocks. They just took the day off. They were some of the weaker stocks in the group. Uh, if you look at the NASDAQ for the day, semiconductors weighed on the NASDAQ as well. I mean, that's just uh, no way around that one. If you look inside uh, the NASDAQ, it's going to be the same names. NXPI was the weakest out of the group there. Um, I'll point out Costco, also reverse course. Uh, so the uh, otherwise like a, a beast of a stock, just finally maybe topping out a little bit. And if you stick with retail, you got Lululemon also pulling back and staying under the 50-day moving average there. Um, in the NASDAQ, I want to point out Microsoft um, actually broke even for the day, but that one was pretty weak. That held back the NASDAQ from being the leader on the day there. The NASDAQ still in first place for the year, however, on a much smaller margin than what it has been. Uh, that, oh, I just thought of a game. Get ready. There's a game coming. Are you ready? I just, I just, okay, I thought of something. Okay, here we go. Uh, so the Dow, let's focus on the Dow. Had another good day here. Um, Apple hit new highs. Let me point this out. There you go. Uh, so Apple's on a tear lately, right? Got a handful of upgrades there, hitting new highs. That was your best performer. Disney was your second best, actually, and I closed my Disney position. I had sold the 140 puts. I closed them out today for 48% of the total premium as it got back to the 20-period moving average. These are short-term trades. I'll, again, stress I just like sharing the fun that I like to have. This has nothing to do with Jazz Wealth, the long-term investment manager. Uh, we manage our own portfolios and we talk about that with our clients, but the short-term fun day-to-day -day trades, I figure that's probably a lot of you guys watching, so I like to share that stuff. And um, so Disney position closed and Disney had a good day. Let me give you a fun fact. Uh, oh, I had one earlier that I hadn't shared. Tell me if I've shared this one because I, I can't remember. In Epcot, you know, you go in, you go to the right, there's a place called Living with the Land, and it's yeah, kind of a cool old style thing. Well, when you go into it, you have to walk through this weird pavilion thing. On the right and on the left is mosaic tiles, right? And just little mosaic tiles. It was a, a husband and wife that actually did it. They also did some of the tiles in the castle, I believe. And well, anyways, as you're walking through, you notice that what's over here is exactly the same as over here. So all the tiles are moving exactly perfect. You look to the right, you look to the left, you can see the same thing. There is one speck of a tile. It is, uh, an, it's an emerald green. The, the rumor was that that husband and wife, when they were putting those tiles together, realized they were having a baby and the baby's birthstone was going to be emerald. So in the green area, they put one emerald tile that's just a little bit different than all the others and clearly emerald. Um, and that was their little sneaky way of doing that there. So uh, there you go. It's a little secret. See if you can find it. It's on the right side when you're going in. Stay to the right. And almost about three quarters of the way down, you'll see it on the right. And it's a, just under eye level for me. And uh, there's your Disney fun fact of the day. Cool thing there. Um, so anyways, that position's closed. We go over to uh, Boeing. Also got a little bit of a bounce back into a known resistance area there. And Visa also continued its rally uh, up into highs which I closed that one. We're, we're done with that from the other day, right? Let me just double check. So no, yeah, Visa's gone. So that was yesterday or the day before. All right. So that is the Dow. Um, and by the way, in the Dow, Nike and Verizon, still no love. Nike has not rallied with the market. It didn't fall either, but it's just kind of sleeping here. And then if you look at Verizon, um, one of the weaker stocks in the Dow very close to hitting new lows. I believe it's closer now than AT&T because AT&T is trying to put in a, a little bottom here. So Verizon is now the closest stock to new lows. And the game that I thought of, Cody, in the yeah, Dow, yeah. can you tell me which stock makes baby powder? It's baby powder. Which one makes baby powder? Or, or, or Tylenol. That's their brand. Tylenol or they make baby powder. Which stock in the Dow? This is going to be one of those times where the, the YouTube chat has the answer and I don't have it. Yeah, could, could um, be, could be. Tylenol, I don't have a guess on. Which one? Maybe, I don't have a guess. Don't have a guess. Okay, that's a tough one because there's a lot of stocks in there. Right? You can't mess with, you know, my, it's Johnson and Seems Johnson like, and Johnson, J&J. &J. I was going to go Procter & Gamble. That was my I put you on the spot, it's all right. Yeah, no, I appreciate there that. Go. There you go. But just one you're throwing at me or you got it? No, I just thought of it. I just occasionally just throw a brand at you or something and... See if you know the company that owns the brand. Um, where was I? Yeah, well, anyways, that's it for the uh, uh, Dow. And the, what do we got for, the, well, we're not doing an everyday guess the Dow. 
Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday, we're doing a guest, uh, the super duper guest the Dow update, right? Yes, Monday, Thursday, yep. Okay, so. Monday, Thursday, we'll have updates for everyone. So tomorrow we'll have one. All right, that's our super duper guest the Dow. Uh, it is um, 500 first place, it's 252nd, and $100 for that. Now, my sort of fun thing to share with you for the day. You notice over the couple, uh, past couple days that I was mentioning the most extended stocks. And I I'd shared all the different trades. I've been sharing the different trades we've had. But as we find these different stocks, I would just share with you how I chose to play them and see what happens. Well, I got the, uh, a handful of emails where people say, well, why did you choose those stocks, like the most extended? Why wouldn't you choose the stronger stocks or whatever? And so I want to share the data with you because you will likely want to do the same thing the next time. In the midst of a otherwise bull market, strong rally, stocks that get the most extended to the downside during sell-offs have the highest probability of bouncing on, to any degree, um, on that next rally, even if it's a small rally. A lot of times, if the stock market chooses to sell off and there are stocks that are overextended, a lot of times those overextended stocks will stop falling and even bounce, even if the market doesn't bounce. So what we did, is I said, okay, well, how do I show this, right? What's a visual way so people know it's like not my opinion? Um, what we did is we said, okay, let's break the entire, it would take a thousand stocks and we're gonna say, let's break them into little groups of 10, uh, sorry, 100, and let's look to categorize them, the most oversold all the way to the stocks that were the least oversold or most overbought in this case. And so what we're looking to do is see the performance of the stocks that fell the most versus all the other stocks that didn't fall as much and to see if those happen to recover over the last few days more so than the stocks. So in other words, is my belief correct that the stocks that sell off the most when the market recovers will have the greatest recovery? So here's what we have. What we did is we said, okay, here's the uh, performance of up to 12.7, which was yesterday, from a metric. We needed a way to say, how are we going to measure oversold or overbought? So we said the stocks that were the furthest from the 50-day moving average, the 100 stocks that were the furthest from the 50-day, let's put them here. The next 100 stocks that were far from the 50-day, but not quite as far, put them here, 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 and so on, all the way to the stocks that were either above the 50-day or just were not very extended from the 50-day. So that's 1,000 stocks broken into groups of hundreds. What we found is the yesterday's performance of the 100 stocks that were the most extended had the greatest return, average 4.79%. The stocks that were, you can see it goes you know, down here, the stocks that were not the most oversold had one of the smaller returns, right? In other words, if you had to be in one of these pockets of returns uh, for the last couple of days, where do you want to be? You want to be over here, right? Worst case right here if you're a little off. So the stocks that were the most, the furthest from their 50 day had the greatest bounce back towards the 50 day, right? Well, then we say, well, maybe not everybody wants to look at it that way. Maybe you use a technical indicator or some other way to identify something being oversold or overbought. So we use the 14 day RSI. I just figured that was a popular one. People like to use that stuff. So now we said, show us all of the stocks with the most oversold reading on your 14 day RSI all the way to the most overbought reading. And then let's see the performance yesterday as uh, what happened. So the most oversold stocks as pertains to the 14 day RSI had the greatest bounce, right? Just another way of looking at oversold stocks. As you find stocks were less oversold, they did fine, they all recovered and, and have bounced or mo as an average they bounced, but they didn't bounce as much. So if you're looking for the greatest possibility of the greatest return, so that even if your entry is off and your exit's off or whatever, you can still grab a slice of this without having the need to be more accurate, you go with the most oversold stocks. So anytime you see that the market is trending higher and otherwise has a sharp sell-off, look for the stocks that have sold off more than the market or find themselves the most extended. Because if you did, if you played these stocks, sure you have a small gain, but you have to be much more accurate with your entry and your exit to get that full 1.23%. Over here, if you're wildly off on your entry, wildly off on your exit, you're still looking at two or 3%, so you can be less accurate. Then what we did finally is we said, okay, since the start of that decline, uh, since the peak of the last uh, rally to the lows from just the other day, um, which stocks had the greatest percentage change from high to low? Just another way to look at stocks that have sold off the most. 
Those that had the greatest sell-off from highs to lows had the greatest recovery from lows to highs. So in other words, this would be your most oversold stock. These hundred stocks in here would have been those that had the biggest move from their 1119 high all the way down to that low, um, meaning you know it would have been not 1%, not 2%, maybe 5 or 10%, right? Whereas these maybe didn't pull back at all. Could have been a Nike in this category here. It's not overbought. I mean, it, it technically compared to the other stocks it is, but um, that's what you have there. So the greatest potential return came from those that sell, sold off the most. In other words, I was trying to use data to show you that's why I picked on your Disney, PayPal, American Express. I mentioned that I didn't do Honeywell. Uh, we, we, I mentioned they say Visa already eBay and things like that. They were the most oversold that in my case had the greatest liquidity in the options market to make it easier to play so that you know you're likely stepping into a winner. Worst case, you have a stock that goes sideways and you're perfectly off. Well, that doesn't matter as long as you didn't buy the shares and you choose to you know, sell the options there. So just a different way of looking at it and now trying to get it to where you can zoom in on that, right? And say, well, okay, maybe this is where I wanna be. At least I have a handful of stocks to pick. I can try to par participate and uh, hopefully it's all, all is good there. So there we go. Uh, where, where would we go now? Uh, let's do the, uh, let's look at some of the sectors. All right, so uh, sector wise, your leaders today would have been oil or energy related. Uh, so if you're looking at something like the OIH had the biggest gain on the day, uh, metals and miners also because gold, it, it had a little bit of a rally uh, after the physical close, it actually melted down just a little bit, ha, pun intended. Um, otherwise, during the elect, uh, cash session, it was uh, higher on the day. We mentioned healthcare already being one of the stronger areas for the day. And um, I want to point out, uh, where was the other one? REITs, uh, we'll use the ICF. REITs at highs and continuing to move uh, higher as well, so that breakout continues. And then on the downside, you had retail, which is not a sector, but uh, we already saw Costco, we saw Lulu uh, falling, so you can understand retail a little bit weak, and financials didn't really participate today. Uh, so one of those areas of the market where, I think it was in last place for the day. Yeah, lost a half a percent on the day, that was your worst performing sector. Um, and consumer staples would be the other one there which I can't find for the moment. Oh, transports, I wanted to point out. Transports, also quiet at highs. So not every sector leading the markets higher on the day. So I thought I would point that out for you. All right, let's go to uh, new highs and lows for the day. So we talked about this yesterday, that because AT&T and Verizon were still over 2% from lows, that there likely wasn't gonna be any new lows today on the list. That actually came true today. Um, they did not make new lows, and so therefore there were zero new lows on the day, 29 new highs. Point out a couple stocks, you got NVR, this is one we've talked about, the breakout from last Thursday, that breakout continuing very strong out, now getting extended, overbought to the upside there, but a very good move there for the REITs. Uh, you got Con Edison, also this was the breakout here, uh, just a slight continuation there, um, kind of an uneventful day, but still in no man's land, clear skies ahead as long as everything continues there. Uh, you have IHS Market, actually all these names did well today, but eh, maybe a little bit of a breakout there. I don't know, just something to look at. I wanted to put that on the list. Church and Dwight was the other. Um, I just like the reversal from yesterday. So it's essentially, we know it's overbought, it's trying to pull back, but the bulls are not ready to give up yet. That's kind of how you look at that, very strong. And IQV, IQV is the other one, just breaking out to highs. At least call it, they say clear skies ahead, no resistance or anything to look at there. And those are your new highs for the day. Yep. And let's do stocks in the news. There we go. You ready? Starbucks, uh, they're union or working on unionizing three uh, corporate stores up in Buffalo is a big sort of uh, a big political game being played there. I just saw a fun thing that said uh, they ought to call it the Steamsters Union. Huh? Come on. Right? If we had an applause button, right? That would be a good one. That was kind of the wah, wah, wah joke. Funny there. Uh, you're going to see uh, Southwest Airlines, LUV is a ticker symbol. Uh, they said, hey, we had a great Thanksgiving, actually. So we're going to raise our final fourth quarter guidance going into the end of the year there. Um, and they said, the strength is good for us. We like the, the optimistic look going forward. It wasn't really that high, uh, higher on the day. Oh, wrong, wrong place. Let's go over here. Pfizer. Uh, so down about a half a percent on the day. Uh, Pfizer, they uh, said they've got the, 
so you had this stuff come out of South Africa that they're uh, saying that they're not seeing very effective uh, vaccines against the Omicron virus there. Then you got Pfizer coming out saying, no, no, ours actually help prevent uh, the infection and it should be fine. So conflicting information out there, and I think that's probably what traders are responding to. We want it to work, but um, not clear data at the moment. Uh, Zotus, uh, they say, hey, we're going to, uh, um, we were going to buy back $2 billion in stock. Now we're going to buy back $3.5 billion. Again, this is going to keep happening with companies that have cash available because they don't want to pay that uh, fee to the government, 1% or 2%, I think it was. And lastly, uh, Black & Decker, SWK is the ticker symbol there. They are going to be uh, selling off their security business $3 billion, $3.2 uh, billion there. Yeah, they're going to be selling that off there, not spinning it off. They're going to be selling it, and they're also going to be buying back $4 billion worth of shares in the meantime. Uh, I believe they were not buying back anything prior to this. And so that's what you have there. Did anybody actually buy Black & Decker stuff? Right. So I don't recall that one there. Anyways, uh, tomorrow, what do we have here? Uh, Hormel reporting earnings. Broadcom is up three of the last four and uh, six of the last seven in terms of response to earnings there. Chewy.com, which is not known for being, um, it, it, it does not one that responds favorably. I'm going to try to pull it up for you. So in reaction to earnings, Chewy.com, you can look back the last eight quarters, it's only up twice, right? So usually, and you could say more, more times than not, stock responds by moving lower. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Lulu, it does report earnings, uh, also a rough one in terms of playing that. And Oracle, also. Oracle's down three of the last four in response to earnings. Old Dominion, yeah, that's right. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. Old Dominion, so they are going to replace uh, Kansas City Southern in the Dow Transports there. I wonder why. <laughs> and, uh, of course, you have changes coming in the S&P 500 and the S&P 400 as well. Love it. Let's see what questions you have, and I will try to answer them for you. There we go. Applause button, right, Craig? Isn't that what streams do these days? You got to keep it action, like lots of noise and stuff going on. What's that? Kramer's got, he's got applause button. Should be more like him, talk louder. <laughs> um, yeah, I hit the like button instead, right? I love it. Yeah, I chose not to invest in any businesses use unionized labor for bad earnings there. Well, Starbucks may have to be one. Uh, now, they're just getting started on that. We'll see how it turns out, but, I mean, that may be the next one. Yeah. Inflation, what is my guess? I won't say because if Cody has a differing opinion, then that allows us to have a bet. Uh, so we'll see what he thinks. Yeah, doesn't seem to affect Starbucks at all, Nancy. Nancy Reagan in the house. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, thankfully uh, for for them on uh, DeWalt, because the only Black & Decker tool I think I ever had, they, my wife hit some like five-year anniversary at work, and they said, pick a product out of the thing, and she thought we needed a drill, so she picked it. And it was the one where the battery was attached. You couldn't even take it out. So you had to plug it in, and then, you know, and it was not a good time. Um, does the chart data work with ETFs? What, what did I, what chart data does it work with ETF? A any data, any research you're doing on ETFs, of course, would work as long as they have that history to look at that research. But yeah, you could search by ETF. Yeah. Yeah. How do you select stocks from the top oversold group? Well, for me, Miriam, in this case, uh, what I look for is the uh, if I'm going to sell puts or try something in the options market, I just want to make sure there's other people playing. So when you look at uh, Disney, very thick options market, PayPal, um, any of the semiconductors I would have stayed away from. Not that they pulled back anyways, but had they, um, they tend not to have a very thick options market. I'd have stayed away from anything healthcare just because I don't like, well, generally don't like biotech uh, in the healthcare space. So it comes down to personal preference. You may not want to play. Uh, like I mentioned, the Carnival Cruises, those were all extended. Uh, Royal Caribbean and, and the Wind Resorts and stuff, they were all extended as well. I just didn't want to be a part of the not knowing about the what people were going to say about the new virus and stuff. So I said, well, I'll stay away from things like that. So that part was just kind of personal preference. 
Costco overpriced, you could argue that, yeah. Yeah, and working on resetting a little bit. Trying to track Nancy. <laughs> I hear that's wildly successful, even though it's not real time by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. What comes first, 20% move higher or lower? I don't know about 20%, but I think the risk is to the downside, not the upside. If you're worried about missing out on gains, uh, I think you probably are misled a little bit. Chris, what? so I love these questions. Is it going to hit 150 before January? Like, because you could tell, like, oh, man, I've got this position. I need it down there. I don't see it hitting 150 by January. I'm not sure you could achieve that. If it was a lesser, um, what would you say? If it, if it was a lower volume stock and could be pushed around a little bit, all right, maybe. But they don't have earnings coming up. There's nothing in the news or anything that would cause that kind of a chaotic move to the downside there. But if you have some kind of option play, I'll, I'll cheer it on for you. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm not a Starbucks fan, so I can't relate to the price of their coffee, but I hear it's expensive. I just, if I'm going to buy coffee, I always like Dunkin' better. I don't, I don't know. I get the same. Oh, but by, no. Uh, what is it? Oh, I can't remember the name. I always say, uh, what's the Minnesota company? We have one here in Einstein's. Einstein's owns them. Caribou Coffee. I always say Malibu Moose. I don't know why it's stuck in my head. Caribou Coffee by the Caramel High Rise beats all of them, hands down. And I don't know if the price is higher or lower. I don't get it like often, but I love it. How far out do you pick the expiration for the uh, fun options? I usually just go one month because I don't plan. They're not investments or anything in particular. So I'm usually looking for that front month or next month if it's a little bit close. Uh, Jesus, sorry. Uh, nothing special there. Uh, can you do a fin tip video on indices and how they were founded and how they operate? I have. Yeah, I've done a handful of those. I, I've done the Dow and I've done the S&P because uh, those are completely different. Um, don't know that I've done a NASDAQ one, but yeah, good. Yeah, I know. Uh, AC, I saw Kroger's drop on the day, yeah. Um, I like it. Why are financials downed? Why are they just down on the day? Just slightly down on the day. Not a big deal. So they're not in any kind of trouble or anything. Just didn't really participate today. A very small down day. Yeah. Thoughts on Twilio? What do we like about Twilio here, huh? Playing for the oversold bounce as well. So you know it's definitely oversold, right? So this little bounce will be, you know, it'd be whatever it's going to be. But at this point, uh, if you're looking for, I mean, I'd be guessing, if you're looking for an entry, you want it to give you a higher low, and you would expect it to give you a higher low. But I don't know what the trade or the idea is there, so I'm not sure how to say. It's a tough one to assume starting a new position, because what's your reward? Your risk is that the trend continues like a falling knife. But what's the reward? It's kind of limited to the upside, right? So it's not... It's less about my opinion and less about other people and more about other people that are coming to this stock going, if I buy it now, what's my reward? What's my potential risk? There's not much reward. There's a lot of risk, right? So you are you likely to attract a lot of people to come and play this stock right here to buy it? It's a tough one to assume that that's the case. Yep. Yeah. Uh, between PayPal and Square, which ones you play for a short term bounce? Well, I am playing PayPal. So PayPal, I sold the 175 puts on that one. I thought about closing them today. I actually thought about closing eBay because I don't know if you noticed, but eBay didn't do anything. I was a little bit upset by that, but I've got room, so I'll play with that. But the answer would be, I, I would be biased because I'm already in PayPal from last, uh, uh, I don't know when we could put it on, but we talked about it on the show here just to share ideas with you, but still have that, have about 20, per, nope, 34% uh, of the total premium. I should have took it off today. Probably should have. Same with eBay. Uh, and I still have ATVI. That's one that hasn't done really much of anything. So just those three positions left. Sold the 55 puts on ATVI. And I am exact, almost exactly flat. Sold for $1.30. It's at $1.34. So need more. Need more there. Yep. Oh, I've never had Dutch Bros. Yeah. I don't think I've ever had that. Yeah. 
good old Folgers. Yeah, there you go. There it is, a Wisconsin guy. <laughs> I just want my Folgers. I like it. That was what my mom drank always growing up. The big can of Folgers. Mm-hmm. Uh, small. There's actually a good little uh, bakery by our house. I think it's like a French-inspired one, and it's just a mom-and-pop one. They do good. And then there's this one right there on Overton, right? What, Frida's Bakery? That's just a standalone thing. Yeah, that's just a bakery. Have you ever been in there? No. Well, that's an intense place. Have you done the conservative grounds right up the road there? No. Conservative grounds right off of 49th Street. It's exactly what you would expect it to be. Oh, okay. Well, the the Frida's one, I, we, I went in for whatever reason one day. That's a real operation. Like, everything's done in there. That, that's pretty crazy. Everybody's now, oh, let's go make some coffee, man. Now I'm kind of jonesing for coffee and bagel or something. I like it. All right. I will wrap it up there. I'm, I'm rambling at this point. Therefore, my comments are useless to you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the data today. Different way of looking at things uh, as far as kind of understanding why we chose what we chose, but putting the data behind it instead of being like, I pick stocks and that, therefore I'm good at something. No, I could just as easily have you know, sucked and, and done badly on that. But now you know the data. You know why we're looking at those things. You enjoy the rest of your day. I'm going to get back to work and uh, adios. We'll see you tomorrow.